First Dance with Lucy. This trip occurred on a Friday from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. I love acid. Lucy is amazing, beautiful, heartbreakingly benevolent, and equally powerful. Albert motherfucking Hoffman came with a true slice of cosmic beauty on his 25th try. A chemical that was created by serendipity that started a revolution. This molecule has been the object of my search for years upon years. So many times the quest for LSD has led to tales of scandalous individuals ripping us off. So many times LSD is fake or not there at all. Some shady shit had gone down, my friend. However, finally, serendipitously, go figure, and randomly, my friend Robbie calls an old comrade of his, one who was known to dabble in DXM. See, my friend Robbie and I have recently came across a fair portion of DXM powder. The call was not about acid, it was about DXM business. But soon the talk of the illustrious chemical came up, as it always does. It just so happened we were in luck, and man, were we in luck. My friend gets the credit. He did the work, he got the acid, and he hooked me up. I went to pick it up from his place at around maybe 2 or 3, and it surprised me with its appearance. It was a small thin white strip of paper, with no perforation. It was multi-layered and very white, almost angelic looking, with a slight sparkle. When I went to pick this up, I had also come to collect some decks. The motherfucker handed me a water bottle. The bottle was three-fourths full of DXM powder, packed. Anyways, back on the road, we pack up a bowl and I bite off half of the 10 strip. I was told by my friend, Robbie, that in order to get the classic in-death acid trip, 4 to 5 would be a good dose. The taste was interesting. I can't quite describe it on memory, as I was quite stoned through all this so far. Quite. It seemed to have a metallic taste, and its absorbing in my mouth kinda sent a rush through my body. I was so excited that I was finally tripping on some real good acid. After about 5 minutes of letting half the 10 strips sit on my tongue, I bit off just a little extra hit, just to make sure that I tripped some balls. There was already plans to drive to another part of town, to a head shop with a dude of ours working, one who would openly sell us nitrous. After a quick few phone calls, it was decided we were going to pick up my friend Leah, then go back up to my part of town to pick up my friend Mike, who happens to have Salvia Devonorum 10X Extract. Spearmint flavored, of course. We got Leah, who is a good friend of mine despite the lack of time I've known her. Really, I don't even remember how I started talking to this girl, but it was via AIM. She's a goofy, cool, down girl. She's also a big fan of Tim Leary and has always wanted to try LSD. I already got this girl to try DXM, which she actually wrote a trip report on the DV called DXM Took Me to India. Anyways, tripping with her was always a good experience. Now that I got her around, the music grooving and the car rolling to mics, the vibes are feeling good. It's been like 30 to 40 minutes and I'm starting to feel real groovy. For those of you who haven't done acid, I don't know how to explain this. Everything is funny. The feeling of elation and excitement at everything is overwhelming. My body starts feeling exquisitely comfortable and energetic. My legs are almost numb. They feel wiggly, watery, and without substance. I don't think I could walk very well right now. We were passing around bowls and talking of times past, when I noticed the space within the car seemed to take on a different feel. I felt as if my perception was based within the space around me, inseparable. It's like my consciousness was a ball that suddenly lost its form and spilled out into the endless electric ocean. The spilling sensation felt damn good. Everything I looked at had taken on a strange green tint to it. Colors blurred slightly like on a fuzzy TV screen. My body was in ecstasy. I was bursting with happiness and thought. I figured out my whole life while silently muttering to myself. The acid was barely even just coming on. Well, it's a few more minutes coasting along Route 40 in an ocean of electric music and love vibes. And then we get back to my town. We head over to my friend Mike's house. The pickup is seamless, and the introduction of Mike's strong and honest vibes are welcomed by all parties in the car. I can feel it. He shows me the vial of salvia, half full. We take off. By this point, I'm starting the trip hard. Upon inspecting any surface, I would notice undulating patterns, creeping lines, and unfolding fractals. 
I stared at my hand and it was like my mind was a zoom in lens and I began to view my finger on an almost cellular level. I snapped out of it. I looked around the car. Mike was starting to trip on a 400 milligram capsule of DXM he had taken earlier. He had his eyes closed over in the corner. My friends Miesmer and Joey were up front, both tripping balls on DXM. I was in the back and my mind was opening up into space. The slightly toxic, grabbing electrical feel that LSA trips bring to mind was very present in the brain. This toxic psychedelic feeling is almost comparable to those I experienced on 5-MeO-AMT. And yet, it felt vastly more benevolent than LSA and so much more pure and smooth than 5-MeO-AMT. So very smooth. It felt like the perfect drug. It was activating the antipodes of my mind, setting the engines of my consciousness to warp drive. I felt my mind expand, and I was sure at this point my pupils had to be huge. I felt very, very pleasantly intoxicated. The interior of the car seemed to glow and simmer with energy. At times, I would think there were other people in the car, other friends of ours. Then I would realize they weren't there and I had just been talking to nobody. Keep in mind, everyone in this car is spaced out. It was the five of us, me, Leah, Mike, Joey, and Miesmer. We were headed to Joey's. We are almost to Joey's when we come across a road called Whip Road. It's been raining, then snowing out today. The road is caked with ice. Miesmer is not a very good driver. He's going way, way too damn fast down these curvy roads, way too high and tripped out and vibing to music to pay any attention to the road. At least 60 miles per hour. Yeah, I know, it's stupid. But keep in mind, we've done this many, many times and it's worked out fine. But not this time. Miesmer lost control of the car. He began to drift his shitty little Geo Metro. He drifted for a good minute, pitching left, then banking hard right, like the car jumped off the ground and switched sides. After bouncing at insane speeds down an icy road, control completely lost, we slid off the road and smashed into a large bush. Thank God this wasn't a tree, but this was a hell of a big bush. It completely decimated the side of Miesmer's car. We sat there, dazed, confused. What the fuck just happened? We were all tripping balls. Nobody panics, confusion around. My girl Leah turns to me and says, Alex, we are just gotten a car wreck and I'm on LSD. Oh, Alex. I look at her and say something consoling like, yeah, well, don't worry about it. We get out of the car. Mike's door was destroyed. The window was knocked out and the door is dented in completely. The driver's side window was also knocked off laying stranded 20 feet off in the background. Miesmer's door was about half dented in, with scrapes covering the rest. Fucked up vibes set in. The car was in a slight ditch on the side of the road, submerged in snow on the left side, and hit a bush. I guess we all presumed we were stuck, so we just stood around for a minute. We decide to try and get out on our own, and Miesmer gets in the car. He starts it, and with a little bit of gas, it immediately bolts out of position into the road, Miesmer almost hits another car, again. Sighs of relief and exasperated looks all around. I can't tell you how good it felt to be on the road again, knowing we wouldn't have to deal with the cops and parents. At least, not now. About 10 minutes later, we are laughing and arriving at Joey's apartment complex. We walk into Joey's apartment building and begin the ascent up the stairs to his third level apartment. The trip upstairs was slow and laborious, as we were all tripping mad balls and shaken from the car wreck. The usually white walls in the building seemed very green to me. The patterns on the carpet were expanding and melting into one another. When we get to Joey's apartment, we go straight to his room. This is the ultimate trip room. Five black lights strand across the room, strategically placed to illuminate the posters covering all four walls with bombastically bright neon colors. In these posters, there is marijuana, naked busty women, and tripped out images of scenery. There is a very nice sound system that is already playing another brick in the wall of The Wall CD. If you don't know who that is by, I would kick you in your balls. The posters look real nice. Me and Leah sit down on the bed and she snuggles up close to me. Her warmth is very welcome on this cold day. She tells me she's tripping really hard and is kind of scared. So I hold her and just sit there with her for a minute, 
staring at a poster of an extremely gorgeous naked woman lying next to a gigantic joint in a bed of satin. I started imagining myself being there with Leah, her being naked. I closed my eyes and my imagination and the LSD brought the scene to life around me. But that wasn't all Dear Lucy showed me. Suddenly, the vivid closed eye scene was blasted to nothing. I was in space. I felt very cold and I looked to my left. I could see Leah's love energy beaming with light and warmth. It was scintillating all up and down my body. It was almost fiery. It was so warm. I could hear her thoughts in my mind. I think she told me she loved me, but I was unsure so I didn't respond. But I merely reciprocated her love. In the middle of space, stoically. I feel incredibly strong and powerful. I love myself, I love Leah, and I love Lucy. We just floated there in our own space, listening to Pink Floyd for what seemed like not hours, not days, but a lifetime. Now I know why they call Pink Floyd Space Rock. Damn! I open my eyes. Leah is sitting there staring at me with love in her eyes. I look at her, my heart melting at the beauty and fiery innocence of this girl. I really don't know why she hangs around with me. Sometimes I'm just a straight up dick to her. But I think she sees through me. Right now, it felt like she quite literally did. I felt an intense mental and emotional connection to her. When I close my eyes, I can see the burning intensity of our bond. It was bright orange slash red, and seemed as if it were fire. Anyways, the vibes from our bond are simmering, and we both shift and change positions as Joey comes back in the room. He had left some time earlier. We had been alone in the room for what seemed like a millennia. Everyone still thinks we had sex. I got up and went into the kitchen to get something to drink. The lights everywhere were very bright and tinted with kaleidoscopic color wheels. The TV had visible bombarding rays showering those who were watching it. It looked like they were being consumed by the rays. I looked at the microwave clock and the moving, wiggling numbers read 8pm. Holy shit, it was still pretty damn early. I had been tripping balls for about 4 hours. I was still going damn strong and I knew we had nitrous, salvia, and that Joey was packing up a bowl right now. First, it was time for salvia. Mike packed me up a nice one-hit bowl in the water bong. I was to go first. I placed the form-fitting mouthpiece up to my mouth and activated the torch lighter. I sucked in hard and deep, closing my eyes and praying to Sally to bring me out of this world and into pure chaos. As I sat there holding the hit and meditating, I rapidly began to feel a sliding feeling. It felt like I was being hurtled forward at a tremendous speed. Lights and swiggles and undulating fractal energy designs exploding everywhere amidst a crackling green white energy force field. And for those of you who have partook of Lady Salvia, you know what I mean when I say I felt like I was the visuals I was beholding. This was my very consciousness being exploded and transmogrified into different dimensions of perception and existence. I exhaled my hit and the sound of my own breath clicked in word and became part of me as it echoed out of my body. I tried talking, which was an incredibly weird and similar sensation. I'm sure I made no sense whatsoever. I opened my eyes and began to drift back into a more comprehensive state. The room was breathing quite heavily. Walls didn't hold their shape, but instead morphed back and forth in seemingly stable undulation. While I had been off in salvia space, my friends had finished the rest of the salvia. Oh well, I was pretty damn fucked up right then, and we still had the nitrous. So I broke out the two 10 packs of whippets I had bought from the head shop earlier. We had totally cleared out the stocks of nitrous. I pulled out a green balloon in my cracker and loaded up a cartridge. I cracked the cartridge and gently milked the nitrous into the balloon with the finesse of a seasoned nitrous fiend. I inhaled deep, sweet, sweet nitrous, like a cool, sweet mint. The kiss of air in my lungs felt so good. I exhaled it back into the balloon and then fully inhaled again. As I did this once more, my entire body started to tingle with vibration. I began to feel an extreme rush of euphoria and pleasure as the nitrous dissociation plunged my consciousness into a void-like state. I was completely nullified. My eyes were closed and all I saw was white. Then the fringes of my perception began to be tinged with color. 
That color bled and swept into the whiteness until I was staring at a stereotypical swirling acid visual cascade. Beautiful. Beyond words. I felt fulfilled to be present in such an experience. So thankful and grateful to be alive now. After a few minutes of that, I opened my eyes. I loaded Leah up a cartridge. After she pounded the balloon a few times, she laid back and collapsed in laughter. We did those two ten packs in a manner of maybe three minutes. At this point, I was exhausted. I hadn't gotten much sleep from the preceding days due to excessive DXM consumption and all the drugs and activity of the day had taken out of me. Lee and I decided to take a nap. The dream I had was a complex, nonsensical one, which had one very important scene. I was in my bedroom with my friends. As I was sitting there with my homies, suddenly a character strolls into the room. As he strides with great beauty, the world fades into blackness behind him. As he sat next to me, I realized this man was none other than Tim Leary. His eyes were glowing orange, the iris, the pupils were huge, and seemed like portals into space. He had an incredible presence. I was enamored. I just stared into his eyes, communicating with him. It was an extremely vivid experience. I woke up and I looked at the clock. Yeah, once again, it was 11-11. I was still tripping balls and tired as hell. After the burst of thought the 11-11 sighting caused, I came back down to hang out. We spent a few more hours just hanging out at Joey's, talking and smoking a lot more pot. Every hit of that fine Mary Jane I took, I would close my eyes and relish in the pleasures and visuals I would experience. Eventually, it was time to depart. We went and took Leah home first. I gave her a hug and bid her adieu. When she left the car, it felt much colder, but also very clear. I felt very lucid. I was ready to go home and spend the rest of the night meditating and communicating with this amazingly benevolent and theogen. And I did. I got home and went straight to my room and turned on my computer. I put in a song titled Ochoa by a band I think is named Shambovo Paya, an excellent song designed for shamanic journeying. I set it on repeat and laid back on my bed in an upright lotus position. It was pitch black in my room. The transitive darkness resonated in my soul. I was immersed in complete darkness. I felt a deep humming that seemed to be resonating from within my spine. It led up to the back of my head, and it felt like something was clogging up my spinal flow. It's hard to explain, but instinctively my hands moved to the top of my head, and I focused love and healing energy into my hands. Doing so, I then concentrated my will on pushing love and healing energy into my mind. The dark, electric, clouding energy began moving out. My vision became illuminated by a distinctly divine light. I had the sensation of several dark entities lurking around me, observing me from another dimension, too far off to even bother communicating in any traditional sense. Their presence had been revealed by the LSD. They were not malicious, but seemed very interested in me, and maintaining their presence with me. I wasn't going to let that happen. I began focusing my energy to expand in waves. A sun-like red energy exploded around me and swept the dark things away. My room was very clear and seemed slightly brighter. I felt so overwhelmingly positive and so relieved. Then I laid down and kind of just drifted off into dreamland. I really don't remember anything of my dreams that night. A shame, as I love dreams and I'm sure I had an incredible one this night. Well, that's the end of the tale. I hope you enjoyed my recounting of a truly spiritual experience. Peace and love.